Hi friends. Okay, so I just found this badass hoodie from middle school. Makes all the hoarding I've ever done worth it. Every mess, every overfilled drawer, worth it. I'm so excited to have this hoodie. Um, so today, you're going to listen to Malcolm Gladwell with me. He's going to talk about his new book, Welcome, not Welcome, Talking to Strangers. And I'm going to use this um, cleanser, this oil cleanser that I've t talked to you about before. And I want to show you why it's so cool because I'm going to be using it to take off my makeup from yesterday. And you'll be able to see it in action. And um, no, it's not easier than using eye makeup remover, but it works better and it doesn't leave your eyes burning or dry at all. It leaves them like really soft and. Anyway, all right, uh, well, here's Malcolm. Malcolm Gladwell, book number six out this week, Talking to Strangers. Uh, what is the premise of this book, your latest book? Uh, the premise of this latest book is that um, we're not very good at talking to strangers. <laughs> um, I was struck by how many of the kind of contemporary high-profile controversies that we find ourselves in come down to the same problem that two people who didn't know each other very well attempt to communicate and fail um, or attempt to understand each other and fail Bernie Madoff people all kinds of people had conversations with Bernie Madoff and didn't never understood who he was the Jerry Sandusky case at Penn State the Brock Turner sexual assault case at Stanford a few years back these are failed um, communications. How is that uh, failed communication? And the one that really um, the book starts and ends with, and the signature case I'm concerned with is the Sandra Bland case, which is the one of those high-profile um, encounters between African Americans and and law enforcement that was <coughs> excuse me so much in the news a few years ago. I'm sorry, um, how was a coach Which was a conversation children, between a young black man, a young black woman, and a police officer who pulls her over, and the conversation goes off the rails. Um, and I wondered, why is it, why is it that, we're, that we fail in these, these conversations with strangers? And that's where the book comes from. Each one of your books has explored an aspect of human communication. What is it about this topic that you keep coming back to? Why is it so important to you? I don't know. You know, I just think it's endlessly. No one loves a transcript more than me, um, and I, I um, am sort of keenly interested in how people express themselves and how they succeed and fail at that. And um, I'm one of those people who, if someone is articulate, I'm, I'm all in. I, I find myself so. I had a, I, I one of the people who interviewed me when I was on my I did a little press tour of England, and I was interviewed by the actor Russell Brand, who has a podcast, a very popular podcast in England, and I'd never met him before, knew, only knew him from the movies, and he starts to talk, and I realize he's one of those astonishingly articulate people, and I was Amazing. just I'm kind of soft. so in awe, and my whole time trying to figure out why, how is it this man is so, has so, has so commanded my attention? And his choice of words was, I was, I, I was having difficulty answering his questions because I was so focused on, like, thinking about, oh, my goodness, I can't believe how, the, you know, the brilliant way he phrased that. And then I would be like, oh, I have to answer. Um, so there's, I don't know, I'm just drawn to that, um, that whole aspect of, of, um, of human nature. For our conversation, we've actually pulled some clips that help to illustrate some of the things you talk about in the book. And I want to start with the Sandra Bland story. And uh, this, is a, this is a very available video if people want to watch the entire thing. But we have just a small clip. Let's watch, and then we'll come back and talk a little bit more about it. You okay? I'm waiting on you. you this is your job. I'm waiting on you. What do you want me to do? Well, you seem very irritated. I am. I, I really am. What I'm getting the ticket for. I was getting out of your way. You were speeding up, tailing me. So I move over and you stop me. Do you mind putting out your cigarette, please? Come on. I'm in my car, but I have to put out my cigarette. Well, you can step on out now. I don't know if y'all heard this recording before, but it 
Oh, it's cringeworthy. It's not how I want to start on my morning. I didn't realize that's what this would be about, but let's go ahead and deal with it. I don't have to step out of my car. Step out of the car. Step no, out of the car. No, you don't have the right. Step not, out of the car. Do not, don't touch me. Get no, out of the not, car. Don't touch me. I'm not under arrest. You don't have the right to say You me. are under arrest. I'm under arrest for what? 25, for what? County you I'm going to drag you out of here. So you're going to you threaten to drag me out of my own car? Get out of the car! Right. And then you I will light me? you up. Get out! Wow. Now! Wow. Get out of the car! For failure to signal. You're doing all of this for Get over you. there! That, the, that interaction ended in tragedy. How? Three days later, <clears throat> she's, she's imprisoned because for resisting arrest. And then three days later, she hangs herself in her cell. Um, you know, a tragic and unexpected result. But the whole, that exchange that we saw, which, by the way, goes on and on and on and on, we only saw a small snippet of it, um, is uh, that was the kind of, when I first saw that online, that was when I realized what I wanted to write about. Because if you break that exchange down, moment by moment, you see multiple failures of understanding of empathy of a million things so just for example in the, in the in the in the segment we just saw she lights a cigarette and we know we now know that sandra bland was someone who had struggled with emotional problems um she had a failed suicide attempt a few months earlier um she's upset and she also has several thousand dollars in outstanding traffic fines so being pulled over by police officer is consequential for her. She, this has happened before. She's deeply in debt because of it. And <clears throat> so she's upset when she gets pulled over and she lights a cigarette to calm her nerves. The way that many smokers will tell you, that's why they smoke, right? To kind of calm down. So she's trying to stay under control and in an unconscious way, I think, trying to signal to the police officer, I don't want this to go awry i'm trying to calm down and he won't let her and he sees her lighting the cigarette as an act of defiance right it's a sort of fun and throughout if you watch the entire videotape you're constantly you see the two of them are talking entirely past each other and that he is reading her disquiet and distress as um as as Hostile. evidence of something sinister as evidence of her being dangerous or malicious or criminal, you know, criminal in some way. It's this kind of um, epic misunderstanding. And I wanted to kind of, so over the course of the book, I, I, I sort of try to break it down. And then by reference to other stories, try and come to an understanding of how it is a very, very, very straightforward. I know I already put my concealer on, but I need some eye creams. I don't need it actually, because that oil cleanser was amazing, but um, I'm going to use it anyway. Okay, never mind. Let's just keep listening to Malcolm. I'll make my picture a little bigger since it's non-picture.